What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. Welcome back to another episode. It's now episode 26. If you're new to our YouTube channel, make sure to like and subscribe, turn on post notification, and leave something for us in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a nice review on those platforms as well. We'll respond back to all of you guys' comments and feedback. But as for today's video, we're going to talk about four teams that are most likely to win the NBA Finals this year. And before we hop into that, I want to give a quick shout out to our subscriber today. Shout out our boy Javi and Langley. Appreciate you liking and subscribing, turning on post notification, and just listening and watching every single episode. Now, for the, this episode, I'm going to start off with the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, we already know the Sixers, their team, you know, these last three or four years, they've had a pretty decent roster, a roster good enough to make the finals, if not win the finals these past couple of years, despite last year when they were a sixth seed. But outside of that, I mean, I had enjoyed get, seeing them acquire a coach like Doc Rivers this year. Um, you know, that was a much needed coaching change. He's a big upgrade from Bruce Bowen. You know, Doc Rivers, he's a guy, he's a proven coach. You know, he's got 960 wins in his NBA career, and he's won an NBA title in 2008 with the dynamic Boston Celtics. But outside of that addition, I really like the additions of, you know, guys like Seth Curry and the other people that they acquired this offseason. But I think the difference maker in Philly's success this year is Joel Embiid's play. You you know he's been a huge dif difference maker offensively you know this is a guy he has zero flaws in his game nearly i mean he can score the ball from anywhere gets to the free throw line a ton and he's averaging 30 points per game consistently now he's also got you know a ton of shooters around him and i think daryl morey did a good job of you know building this team around him and ben simmons allowing them to you know be able to you know bring out the best in their talents and everything, but also, you know, have other guys that they can rely on offensively and defensively. You know, they, they got multiple dynamic scores in Seth Curry, Shake Milton. Uh, ben Simmons struggled this year. He's not really a scorer, but you know, this is a guy who typically puts up 16 to 18 points per game. And you also, you know, have a ton of shooting like we stated earlier but they've got four guys you know who average 14 points per game or more and overall i just think that this is a team that matches up well with everybody offensively or defensively so i feel like they're one of the surprise teams that could possibly make if not win the nba finals this year but greg what are your opinions on the philadelphia 76ers yeah i totally agree with everything you're saying I, i'm really high on the Sixers just because how they drafted it started in the offseason who they drafted who they brought in and i love the veteran guys that they brought in like a danny green and a dwight howard to bring some toughness to the team and then i love how they brought in doc rivers and got daryl Morey and just re restructured the whole organization and really like you said got their shooters and with emmy with Embiid playing at the MVP level, like these guys are really, they're, they're legit. I think we should really, really pay attention to these guys because they, I think they can make a deep run in the Eastern Conference and maybe even make it to the uh, NBA Finals. But I just, I just want them to be in the playoffs, have consistent shooting and uh, don't, and when it gets tough in the half court set, even though they're fourth in pace, you're not going to get, you're not going to be able to get out and transition that much in the playoffs. So when it comes to the half court set, Make sure that Ben Simmons does not get lost in the offense. And then hopefully Doc Rivers, like like last year, hopefully doesn't happen again. He doesn't get out coached. And and but if those three things don't happen, I feel like the Sixers have a legit chance to make the NBA Finals this year. Right. I agree 100 percent. But moving on from the Sixers to the Brooklyn Nets. Now, Brooklyn, they could be they could legitimately be a team that, you know, is higher ranked on this list. I mean, we got them at number three right now, but they could also be severely lower. But I mean, overall, you know, this is a team they've got a dynamic trio. Um, they've struggled this year since the Harden trade. You know, they're eight and six. Um, overall, though, this season, they're eight and one against teams that are above 500. But they struggle against those lower seeded teams who are below 500. They're seven 11 against them. But offensively, you know, this is a team they don't have too many holes. They've got three capable guys uh, that are capable of dropping 30 points on a nightly basis. You know, you have Harden who can run the offense without KD and Kyrie whenever they leave the game. But they're even better when, you know, you implement those three guys into the offense. Uh, they're currently putting up 122 points per game. They're top three in the offensive rating at 116 and a half. And overall, this is just a team that looks phenomenal all time when it comes to offense and everything. But the issues for the Brooklyn Nets, we all know, is on the defensive end. They struggle guarding guys on the perimeter, and they put DeAndre Jordan, who's an aging 32-year-old, 
in a tough situation, man. I know he's getting a lot of blame for the blame for their defensive uh, woes and everything, but really their biggest issue is guys on the perimeter. You know, they their team they they need more wing defenders and everything. Yeah, you could use bigs and stuff, guys like Andre Drummond, who I think the Brooklyn Nets should actually trade for instead of buying him out because. The thing with Drummond, if you buy him out, for one, he's going to have to decide to forego some of his salary like you stated in the last episode. But on top of that, that's going to hurt, you know what I'm saying, your luxury tax and everything if you're the Brooklyn Nets. So I think it would just be better for them to trade for Drummond. Or, I mean, they don't necessarily even have to trade for Drummond. I mean, there's a lot of other guys who are on the trade market that aren't being talked about that, you know, Brooklyn could really pick up. But I think their biggest issue is the fact that, you know, they're paying DeAndre Jordan. 39 million in 39 million dollars in four years you know this is a guy like i said he's he's slowly digressing man he hasn't done much for you offensively or defensively and i think it's just best that they move on from him now if they acquire him in a trade with andre drummond um you know they'd have to get get rid of deandre jordan obviously Spencer Dinwiddie and Timothy Luawi. I don't think that's too much, you know. He, he, Andre Drummond, he's going to come in, be a defensive presence, also gives you more offensively, and he's just a a better overall fit. But what are your opinion on the Brooklyn Nets? Yeah, I love the Nets. I really do. I, they have a lot of offensive power. Everybody knows that, yeah, they are struggling on the def defensive end. I would love to see Drummond on their team. But, yeah, like you said, DeAndre Jordan's problem is that when – people do pick and roll against him is he can't really switch or hedge or really defend on the perimeter just because his age and he's just he's never been that type of player so getting a guy like drama who can do that and really defend the paint especially because like all these teams have rim protectors and we're starting to see that defense you're starting to see that these guys are valuing the deep the two-way players three and d players these type of these type of bigs and wing players um, and they're they're starting to be more valuable on these teams. So Nets and Net the Nets definitely need a guy like that to help them going into playoffs. And I think the Nets with their defensive woes, I think it's really communication and them getting to know each other and continuing to play with each other. And I think they have figured out something when it comes to the playoffs. So I'm not gonna overreact on the Nets. They will be in the Eastern Conference Finals. But to get to that next step, oh, you think so? Definitely, yes, I definitely do. Just with the offensive firepower, I think, I think, I think with the offensive firepower that they have, I think they can lead them at least to the Eastern Conference Final. I don't know about the finals yet because of the defensive woes and see what they do with these moves coming up in the trade deadline. But I definitely do think they can make it to that. You see, my finals. my thing is, and I've stated this, you know, outside of the podcast to other people that I've talked to about the Brooklyn Nets. My my issue is. It's not just the fact that like they, a lot of people think it's it's a chemistry thing. Oh, they they've got a ton of games to, to you know fix their problems and everything. I don't I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that at all. I mean, for one, when it comes to having a championship roster, for one you have to have depth. Brooklyn yeah, obviously gave depth. that up to yeah. get James Harden. Two, you have to have leadership. Kevin Durant is not a leader. He said it before. Kyrie Irving, if he's a leader, he's a terrible one because you how can you you know what I'm saying just try to lead your team when you don't take care of what you need to take care of on a nightly basis and sometimes you we've seen you sit out games this year and then James Harden he he he's tried to you know what I'm saying essentially be the vocal person in the locker room and everything they've even had guys like Jeff Green come out and say talk about their defensive woes and everything but I just feel like judging by this roster right now we can't really judge them as far as you know later down the line of the season. I feel like we have to wait until probably like March or maybe even after the deadline to really judge this team and really see how they can operate against, you know, contenders and everyone else in a postseason. But my biggest thing, they're giving up way too many points. You should not be giving up. Yeah. 122 since Harden, since the Harden trade, that is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, like, a lot of people have been talking to me talking about oh they they're they're gonna outscore everyone yeah they're putting they're putting up historic numbers offensively but they're also doing the same thing defensively so i mean that's something that's gonna have to change but, but the, oh there's what one, were you have to say uh, i was about to say there's one game that i want everybody to tune in it's february 18th the lakers and the nets play the the nets are getting katie back to tonight but i want everybody to tune into that game and really evaluate how this could be a championship matchup, so we could definitely see how the Nets look against the Lakers. Yeah, and I, I mean, as far as right now, the Lakers definitely match up with them 
way better. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, and on top of that, they're coming off of a championship. This is a team that has those things that Brooklyn needs. Chemistry, uh, a defensive mindset, an offensive presence, and not one, not two, but, you know, multiple dynamic scores on their roster. So I feel like the Lakers are the favorite. But we're going to talk about them later on in the video. And as for right now, we're going to move on with the Los Angeles Clippers. Now, the Clippers, you know, currently the third seed in the West. They've got a ton of depth. They've got experienced veterans. And most importantly, they've got a chip on their shoulder. Now, obviously, they're looking to bounce back from last year's second round playoff exit. It was very embarrassing as a... I'm not a Clippers fan, but for Clipper fans in general, it's very embarrassing to see them, you know what I'm saying, blow multiple leads in the playoffs to, you know, the Denver Nuggets, a team not favored to make it to the conference finals and everything. But I think the offseason off season additions will come in. They'll be, they've been pretty beneficial so far. I mean, they got Serge Ibaka. This is somebody, yeah, this is somebody, you know, he's won a championship with Kawhi Leonard not too long ago. Um, on top of that, you know, he's made multiple NBA all defensive teams, and he's also led the league in blocks throughout his career. So he's somebody who can, you know, help you offensively stretching the floor and defensively blocking shots and everything like that. But they also, you know, acquired a guy in Luke Kennard who brings shooting and he makes your offense more versatile, you know? But I think the biggest thing is they still are in need of a big. They're struggling with rebounding right now. Um, they're their leading rebounder on their team is Serge Ibaka. He averages 6.6. .6. And if you're if you're looking at the Western Conference with all, all those teams that have dynamic bigs, Portland, um, you can make a case for Aiton and Phoenix, um, Denver, Denver, and I mean the Los we Angeles Lakers with and, Anthony Davis. You know, yeah, even the even the Utah Jazz, Jazz with yeah. Rudy Gobert and guys like that. But yeah, I think. That is going to be something that will definitely hurt them in a postseason. So they're going to have to definitely fix that. But in my opinion, for the Los Angeles Clippers to make it to the finals, Paul George has to be the deciding factor. You know, he's currently putting up MVP-like numbers. Um, he's led them to a 19-8 and eight, eight record so far. And if he continues to play at a high level and they learn to not blow leads, they've got a good shot at a title. But what are your thoughts on the Clippers, Greg? Yeah, I totally agree. I, I like the Clippers roster. I love that they brought in Serge Ibaka. I like Serge Ibaka. He brings a toughness. He brings a toughness to the team, and he really is just a great, a great guy, a great, a great guy you would want on your team. I, Paul George is playing really well. Kawhi is playing really well. But like we've been talking about, I think, I think not only do they need a center, I think they need a point guard too, a veteran point guard can, who can take the pressure off of Paul George, who struggled in the playoffs, and I feel like he might struggle again just because sometimes he 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 has shown the struggle in the playoffs, and when the pressure's on him, he does tend to fold. So I think they should add a veteran point guard and a center, maybe add an Andre Drummond or a JaVale McGee or someone like that who can come in and help on the, on the defensive boards, offensive rebounds, and get you more possessions. Yeah, I'd agree 100%. I mean, Kyle Lowry, Lowry, he's a guy, he's still on the market and everything. So hopefully they can go after him because they weren't able to get a guy like Derrick Rose and everything. But for moving on, we're going to talk about the Los Angeles Lakers now. In my opinion – and I think everyone else is there. Obviously, the favorites to win the title because, you know, yeah, they're the yeah. defending champs. They just won last year. Um, and on top of that, you know, they come in this season, they improve their roster this offseason. They got guys like Dennis Schroeder. You know, he's a six man runner up. He also brings high volume scoring, typically off the bench, but this year he's starting in order. So, he, in order for him to get, you know, a big contract. But if he thinks the Lakers are going to pay him, he's crazy because why would we pay? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dennis Schroeder. Yeah, I, we I can, definitely understand. When we can go out and get guys like Zach Levine and everything through trades and stuff. But I also like the addition of, you know, Mark Gasol. This is a guy, he's a floor general, uh, stretch big, you know, somebody who can not only operate the offense from, you know what I'm saying, far away on the perimeter and everything, but he also brings, you know what I'm saying, a little bit of defense to your yeah. ball club. He I has mean, slowed down a little bit, but he still has enough basketball IQ where he can get after them. Right. And then on top of that, you know, they added guys like Wesley Matthews. He's a three and D guy. He's essentially Danny Green just on a cheaper contract. Now, I'm glad that we we acquired Wesley Matthews because, you know, we'd have to pay him only three million dollars a year instead of having to pay Danny Green 15 million. So I like that signing. But the most important signing and the biggest signing of this offseason was probably Montrez Harrell to the Lakers. You know, Hell yeah. he's an undersized big. Uh, only thing is, you know, he struggles defensively. But I think having Anthony Davis, LeBron James, and the rest of those guys on your team, they'll help him out with that. But he also, you know, this is a guy, he's going to come in, he's going to help AD in the front court. And he's an upgrade from JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard. 
you know so overall i mean i think this Laker roster they're pretty well rounded uh they've got scoring at all positions last time i checked they were 13th offensively they could get better but you know it's still early in the season they've got a ton of depth they got two top five players in the nba and they match up well with everyone you know they got a ton of firepower and all and you know what i'm saying all of that stuff but Greg, yeah, what totally, are your thoughts on the Lakers? Yeah, I totally agree. LeBron's having an MVP season. I don't care what anybody's saying. He's an MVP MVP favorite right now. But yeah, you're you're 17, you're 18, 36 years old. He's balling. Being a leader on that team, making sure everybody's in the right spots. Last night I watched the game. I want to see my guy Kuzma be consistent in the <laughs> playoffs. He had 20 points yesterday, getting after it on the offensive boards. I think he had five offensive rebounds yesterday, creating second chance opportunities for the team. If he can do that in the playoffs, the Lakers, the Lakers are unstoppable. Not just not not only Kuz, but people like Harold, Marcus Saw, Dennis, Alex Caruso can bring that energy, energy off the bench. Um, Wesley Matthew, Matthews knocked down open shots. I, the Lakers just have so much firepower, like you said. And that everybody can just come together and play their role. They have a a high chance of repeating this year. Yeah, and I and I think that's the one deciding factor that you know separates them from the rest of the pack. They've got multiple guys who can you know step up on a given on any night. You know what I mean? But. Yeah. I think outside of that, that's all that we have for you guys today. Uh, we appreciate you guys really tuning in to another episode with us. It's now episode 26 of the Ball Fake Podcast. Before you guys leave, make sure to um, type in the comment section, hashtag let's go viral. This is a new movement that we recently just started. Yes, We'd sir. love to see you guys support that in the comment section. But make sure you guys also like and subscribe to our channel if you're new. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure to give us a nice review. But outside of that, it's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. We out.